Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of the Drop Jaw Flies Fly Time Tutorials. I got a really fun one today. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and what we're going to learn how to tie is the zip stick, zip stick streamer. And the reason why it's called the zip stick, I've had a lot of people asking questions about this, and, and the, the main reason is it's stiff, it's solid. Uh, it's just like a jerk bait, really, from the gear world. Uh, rip bait, stick bait, whatever you want to call it. But So that's where the stick comes from. And then the main body of the fly is a zip tie. And so zip stick. Um, I guess a lot of other questions that I've received recently is why. You know, why would you want to have something like this? And... I guess the main reason is just to have a different action. You know, all the fish, mostly trout, uh, bass too, I guess, they, from, from fly fishers, most of our flies are articulated. And they see that action all the time. Of course, I'm not going to stop fishing my articulated flies. Most of mine have uh, three hooks. They got the head hook and then a mid-body hook right here and then of course a tail hook it gives it length and a lot of swimming action and of course I'm not going to stop uh, fishing these but to give the trout which is what I mainly fish for a different look you know something different that they don't see I thought well I need to create something stiff something that doesn't have that articulated action but one that still has a ton of action and it's this uh, it's this type of a bait right here, or bait, <laughs> this type of a fly. I guess you could call it a, a bait. You know, most of the materials that we're using now are all synthetic. It's just a resin, basically, in a different form, in a free-flowing form. And if, you know, if, if I compare it to a, a true stick bait or rip bait, the resin obviously is hard. Uh, the, the material that we're going to use uh, for this fly is uh, Blaine Chocolate's uh, Filler Flash. And basically the same material, just in a different form. So I guess I can call it a bait. But uh, anyway, this fly, because it's on a zip tie, and because I have this little wire out here with the crimp on it, and I'll explain that too, when, you, when I pull this through the water and I really put the screws to it, it goes back and forth and rolls hard. And it's made uh, to do that, to just bam, bam, go back and forth. There's a rattle in it and it really gets the fish's attention. This time of year, uh, maybe some of you guys are experiencing it as well, but we have lake turnover where the water will stratify, flip over. And it murks, it murks the water up, dirties it up, and of course visibility goes way down. And this fly, I think, gets the fish's attention a lot better than our articulated flies. Um, and, and what I mean by that is it, of course it's flashing, of course it, you know, it's brightly colored, this one is. But that action as it's going through the water, I think knocks on their lateral line a lot harder and more aggressively than a articulated fly and of course with the rattle uh, with its size and with it going through the water like that it gets bit I've caught really nice fish on this and it's it's pretty much brand new I mean I I have only fished this for a month and feel confident it, uh, enough about it to to put it out there and say this works uh, because it does and I think going forward I will uh, I'll probably start off fishing with this on most of my trips. Um, that and along with Baby Whitey. And uh, I, I have experimented with bigger versions already. This is uh, Juvenile Trout. And this one, you know, I was thinking about saltwater too. Uh, this is a, a giant fly and it's tied on a stainless steel cable tie. So yeah, there's a lot of saltwater applications. Um, this is never going to corrode. The tensile strength is fantastic. And uh, of course this has a, a rattle in it too. 
but I noticed that when they get this long, uh, this one, it was kind of tough for it to swing much in the water and not, not as much back and forth action as these five inch version. But I'll, I'll keep playing around with that. But I just wanted to show you that uh, big ones are possible. And I uh, apologize for my camera. It's having a tough time today. I don't know what the deal is focusing, trying to get that to, to come in. But, but these flies, when they're moving through the water, you know, obviously uh, they're going to get the fish's attention. And if he's hungry or mad at the fly, he's going to hit it, which is the goal of us fly fishers. So anyway, this is what we're going to tie today, the zip stick. So let's get started. Um, got a, obviously um, you paint these so you can paint them to match whatever conditions that you're experiencing or you know whatever trip you're going to prepare for. Um, before my the water got murky this was the one I was actually using and it's more of a ghost color. Uh, this is the Game Changer Chenille uh, Blaine Chocolates and painted kind of in a you know just an olive over white and this was this fly just got hit hard <laughs> really hard and that's what made me so excited about this uh, style of tying and now that when the murky water hit I went to the brighter colors obviously and they were getting pounded too and so it's a winner even though it's only I've only been using it for a month like I said before I totally feel confident about putting it out there so um, what we're gonna do this is an 8 inch cable tie or zip tie uh, 45 pound loop tensile string so it's we're not going to put it in a loop it's just going to be uh, run straight and so no need to worry about the strength of this um, I'm going to put this use my Renzetti today just because of the upward position of the jaws and it's going to help me out a lot better so I'm going to stick about two inches out right now and I'm going to use some red thread just so you can see this a little bit better. But just like you would on the shank of a hook, just go ahead and get your thread on there. Put it right on the shank. I got a little thread wrapped up around my bobbin here. Unedited, unscripted. This is uh, what happens to fly tires, especially when you're doing a demo. Count on small little glitches, just like this. Okay, we got that fixed. We got that on there. If you'll notice when I'm tying this, I'm going to keep my fingers pinched right where the right where I'm putting the thread, just to support that. And. Uh, I always spend quite a bit of time on the tails of my flies. I, I really enjoy that part of the, the fly. I think that the fish is, you know, if they're following it, they're going to see that and key on it and check it out. So today, I'm going to use a little bit of copper crystal flash. Stuff is awesome. All crystal flash is awesome, but this copper color, I really dig it. That and the gold. So you just uh, put that underneath the zip tie, work your way back, and occasionally some of the fibers will want to come up alongside the zip tie, but you can just put it down, or not even worry about it. You can just let them go where they go. We just want to get them secured. So they come right off the bottom of the zip tie. And once we get them on there, I'm going to cut them to length, probably about an, let them overhang about an inch. And uh, right above that, right to the side of it, I'm going to put this gray shad colored saddle hackle. I love the look of this. I think it really looks like a tail. I'm going to put this on your side of the fly and I'm gonna have the tips just overhang that crystal flash by a little bit and when I wrap over that thread torque is gonna take it to the bottom and then do a loose wrap and a couple tight ones secure that wrap it back up a little bit for some strength and stability trim it 
And to go over the top of it, I'm going to put some olive for a little bit of a contrast. I love the tails. That wants to come over. Just grab it. Move it up. Pull my I've got to pull these back up a little bit. And there we go. I'm going to lift up these olive ones and just put a wrap underneath there to keep it up on top a little bit. And we're not done with the tail yet. All my tails, for the most part, I really like the way this Senyo's Barred Predator wrap looks on my tail. I'm going to go with gray and just get out as much as you like or skip this step or whatever you'd like. If you do your tail however you want to, but this is how I tie the zip stick. And I'll I'll run those not quite to the end, but they're going to go on the side. They're not going to hang out as far as the rest of it. And I'll flip this over and kind of pinch that so they're going right down the zip tie. There we go. We got it on. I'll cut that to length. Now hopefully we sell that tail to a giant trout or whatever you happen to be fishing. Um, so, what I'm going to do now, this is kind of a, a fun part here. I'm going to take some 25 pound mono and I'm going to be using, a, this is the last one in this package, it is a TMCO 8089 number 6. And this has a good gap, thin wire, good penetration into the, into the fish, to those hard bony mouths of the bigger fish. And uh, what we do, what I do, is just put the mono right up through the top of the hook and, and so I've got about an inch of tag running out the back and then take your main line wrap right behind the eye of the hook there's two there's three four five six seven for good luck and what I'm going to do is just take it and put this main line back down through the eye of the hook. Popped out on me. Yeah, I'm gonna pull on that extra hard. And that's not gonna come loose. Pull on the back. Just gonna grab some pliers here and pull on the, the back. And yeah, that's not going anywhere. And then what I'll do is just uh, trim the tag end of this a little bit. And let's put this on our zip tie now. I'm going to have this sit right under the right underneath. Now, if it goes to the side on you, that's okay. That's, you know, it'll be okay. But you'll get more hooking hook gap if you can keep it right underneath the zip tie. And just run it all the way back. Run your thread all the way back. I'm not, I'm not putting that much pressure with the thread. I'm just trying to get it so that it's underneath the zip tie. That's all I'm, that's my goal right now is just to get it underneath the zip tie. Especially right where that hook eye is. Try and, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure. And then as I go forward of that, the thread is going to take that uh, mono and just keep it right up underneath that zip tie. We'll go back. Now we'll put a little bit more pressure on this zip tie and the hook. 
and really get that on. We don't want this to be coming loose or flip or anything. Of course, the, the cord of the in the chocolate spiller flash is going to add some strength, and we're going to glue this too. But I'm not really that concerned about how much flex I get out of this because that's really not the action that we're going for. A little flex is okay, but um, you, you're going to see that this is really going to stiffen up as we progress in this fly. And here's the other key component. This really gives a cool action. What I'm going to do is take this ribbed scud body, tungsten, and this is a large. And I really apologize, guys, for the, uh, the lack of focus in the camera. I mean, you're probably seeing everything generally, but it's not that clear. I don't know why I can't get it to focus. I might probably have to do this again. But I'm going to take this and run it almost all the way to the back of the fly in the back of that hook. That's another reason why I chose such a large gapped hook for the rear, because this is going to be sitting into that uh, hooking area, into that gap. But you can see there's still plenty of gap left to hook up a fish, and they do. It, it does. So what this, what this weight in the back does is after I get done jerking, and you know uh, of this fly, jerk it through the water, bam, bam, to the right and the left, because the weight is in the back, it will pause momentarily in this horizontal position instead of diving immediately. So after it's moved, you stop it, you give it a pause, and it stays there just for a second, and it do, it'll start to sink head down, but not very much, almost in this attitude, and it'll start to sink so slowly. If you wanted to suspend it in a certain level of whatever water column, uh, use a floating line. And then if you wanted to get down to 5 feet or 6 feet or even 10 feet, you know, you'd have to uh, lengthen your leader and jerk it, let it pause, let it sink back down. And then the, the fly line, because it doesn't sink, you know, it's going to hold it in that position. So when it's the water super cold, you'd probably want to do that. Right now I'm using intermediate line with the uh, 1.2 per second sink rate, 1.2 inches per second sink rate, uh, and uh, it works great. So got the weight on there, wrap this up just a little bit more, and secure that, put a little bit of this Loctite on both sides, and especially over the feathers of the tail and that thread that's holding all that, that whole tail together. And that's good. Woo, stuff is strong. Breathe that all day and, you know, come up with all kinds of crazy ideas for fly tying. Wow. Okay. It's time now to put our chocolate filler flash on there. I'm going to grab the end, come in on your side, and wrap over with my left hand. And I'll wrap that right over the weight, over the other side, I'll wrap it all the way to the tail. Now that glue is still sticky, and so that's going to help it. I'm going to put just a little bit more on there. And this, this one I'm going to make a little bit bigger, this particular fly, maybe a quarter of an inch longer than normal. And so I'll just release that zip tie and pull out a little bit more. You've got the option, you know, obviously with an 8 inch zip tie you can make a really long body, but I found that the 5 inch length, or just even a little bit longer, will dart back and forth better. So. There we go. Now, this is, this is a really awesome glue to work with. It's the Liquid Fusion. Uh, no odor. Uh, I, I get this all over my hands. I don't have any issues. I can breathe the air <laughs> around this and it doesn't kill me. And so I really dig this. It is flexible. I'm just going to put a little bead right over the top of this. And I, I'm not going to worry about getting it on my hands, but we're going to wrap this filler flash 
through this and we're gonna that's gonna keep it where we want it so make a wrap push the fibers back make a wrap push the fibers back make a wrap and just keep going working your way up make it kind of dense I, I've got a three foot piece of this stuff I'm working with right now that way when I trim it you know it'll look pretty good okay I really packed that on there and we'll tie this off lock it down some wraps right in front and what we're gonna do I'm gonna we're gonna remove this from the vise put our head hook in the vise and while we're playing with that for a second it's going to give that glue time to set up just a little bit so it's not wet so let's remove the whole thing thread zip tie everything just set that to the side and we're going to go with same hook except for this is going to be a number two tmco 8089 I think originally these were called, well, I think it still is a, a bass hook. I think, man, that's really thin wire for a bass, but surprisingly strong. I do have used uh, the Partridge Predator hooks. I've used, the obviously, the B10S is one I use a lot. Uh, but, but just for this demonstration, I'm going to use this hook. Okay, got another bobbin loaded up with... The ultra thread in the, I can't remember if it's 240 or 280. I'm one of those guys that just doesn't look at that. If it's strong, awesome. If it serves my purpose and my needs, awesome. And this does. So you're going to get that on your hook as usual. Get that down. And going to bring this back into play now and this is kind of up to you you know where you want to how long you want your fly to be and I'm going to put my thread almost in the middle of the hook maybe a third of the way down I'm going to put my my thread of the red thread right where right just behind where the hook starts to, to bend off bend down and I'm going to wrap the mono, I'm going to wrap the zip tie, I'm going to wrap this all together. We're going to get this on the hook. With the, with the zip tie, you definitely do not want to wrap past where the hook starts to bend down. Because that will bend your zip tie down and you'll get a weird looking fly. I'm sure it will have good action. I'm sure it will still work, but it's it, it's not what you want. If it happens to happen, it happens, no big deal. Let me how let me know how it works. But but that's it right there. We've got our zip tie on to the other hook. And what you do here is bend this zip tie back. You can even pinch it just a little bit and I have these super sharp scissors from rising I'm gonna cut that zip tie and there we go we got a long piece of mono sticking out and of course this fly has a, a rattle and I apologize I'm gonna tie this rattle on my side <laughs> so I apologize but there's the notch the tying notch right there for it for the thread and it's gonna go maybe a quarter of an inch above where the hook starts to bend down so let's get that on there Okay, that is on there. Remove the 
this red thread forward. Now don't let this be uh, confusing to you or intimidate you at all because of what's what's going on here. Uh, we're going to remove this big thread, the larger thread, and I'm just going to put that right there. Whip finish it right up at the front. I use a ton of glue on my flies, so one is good. Okay. Now this is where just if you can, if you you can move your other thread, your I've just moved my red thread, and I'm just gonna hang it off the back of the vise. And now with this piece of mono, I want, because our other hook is actually anchored to this, I want to make sure that this thread never slips, so there's never a problem with it. And the best way to do this is just to make a loop with it. Here's my tag right here. It's going to come out the front of this hook just, just by a little bit, maybe an inch. And then with the front end, front edge of the loop, we're going to wrap over that tag end. So here it goes again. Here's the tag sticking out the front. And I'm going to wrap, let me get this going, we're going to wrap once. So if you can see that now, just wrap behind that first barrel. There's three, there's four, five, six, seven. Keep the tension on that. Put your finger up on top or your thumb and pinch those barrels so they don't come loose. And with your right hand, grab this tag end and pull it tight. Very tight. Now there we go. Now that is secure. Trim that off. Of course, we're going to hit this with some Loctite up on top. And here's the, here's the other crucial part of this fly, is we're going to take our, this is 26 pound test, nylon coated stainless steel wire, it's very flexible, it's easy to work with, it's very strong. So what we do with that is come up through the eye, and just kind of avoid that super glue. I'm just going to put my index finger right behind where we wrapped, where we did our, as you could call it, a snell, similar to a snell. And we're going to wrap right behind the eye of the hook once, twice, three times, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to take our the tag end and drop it right down from the top and pull very tight and then take your crimp put that on a little crimping sleeve and then run it back through on your wire back through the sleeve and that will create a loop out here on the front just like that now you want from this edge of the crimping sleeve from the eye of the hook, I'm going to go just over an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to leave out for my loop end maybe 5 30 seconds, just over an eighth of an inch, just like that. And I want this coming back up from the bottom so that both pieces of this wire are coming up from the eye of the hook back. And there we go. That's all we're going to do. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and we're going to start crimping. Once you get it where you, you want it, crimp a little bit right there in the front and just work my way back. Almost. I'm not going to crimp it all the way. I'm going to leave the, this back end loose just a little bit because as, as this is being pulled and, and seriously ripped through the water, I don't ever want this, this wire right here to come in contact with those with crimped edges. I just don't want to weaken that at all. So now I'm going to really 
crimp the whole thing and that's not going to come apart. So we've got that uh, we've got that set up, that part of our fly. Now we're going to wrap those wires down. We're going to wrap through the mono a bunch of times. We, uh, we want this to never come apart. We don't ever want it to fail, <clears throat> especially on a big fish. If you lose a big fish, you don't ever want it to be because your fly failed. Now we're we'll, going to whip finish this. There we go. I've got tons of old scissors here, so I'm just going to use them. and That's all they're good for anymore is to just cut wire. There we go. And of course, we'll hit that with a little bit of Loctite. Keep that wire set. Speed this up a little bit, sorry for the noise. Okay. Now I'm going to take the liquid fusion glue again, and I'm going to uh, put a little bead right up on top, and join the rattle to the hook shank, and then the rest of our filler flash is going to be wrapped in that too. So I don't want that sliding around or getting, you know, when it gets wet and it gets loose, I don't want to have any trouble with it moving. So here we go. We'll start wrapping again. Try and get it over that uh, rattle so that the, the end of it doesn't stick out too much. Push it back as you wrap it. And I tied this one really, really dense, and so with the, the filler flash, so I'm gonna have to add another piece, but I have one on standby right here. Gonna tie this off. Tying another piece of filler flash. There we go. Let's really wrap that down, lock it down, just like that. And now we've got our fly basically done. Uh, I'm going to put the head on just to test it. It fits over very well. Now uh, I'm going to trim this out. If, if it gets really long or uh, super boring or whatever, then I'll speed this up. But I wanted to do this step by step in real time so that you kind of get an idea of how long this fly is to, to tie, how long it takes, and then you know everything that's involved. And so let's just whip this off. I'll do it one more time. We'll hit it with a Loctite. Done. So same material, obviously, as some of those Game Changer type flies uh, was really cool. That was something that was really different when it came out. So there's the fly, and it's about five inches long. It looks like a puffball right now. Um, 
there's the head and I'm going to I'm going to keep this head on just so that as I'm it'll be a good reference for me as I'm trimming this so put on some music here trim this out make a big mess If you've never done this before, you're, you're really going to want to taper from the tail. You want to make the tail pretty slender, obviously, just how a uh, fish is, and progress, you know, leave it longer as you get closer to the head. And it might take a, a few times of practice, but you'll get it. But most of the serious trimming is going to be down by the, the tail, obviously. See how we're coming along safely? Okay, clean up right around this tail section here. We're getting it. Okay, I could, I want this to, it's kind of a long fly and I, if I cut it any skinnier then it, it'll just look like a little straw or something. And I want it to have some shoulders. When it goes through the water it does snake down just a little bit. Not look so puffy so I'm, I'm about done cutting it here. And I'm also if you want to stick around to watch me paint this you can do that as well. I'm going to remove the head now. Well, I'll just leave it on and do that later. So, taking some time here. Um, 
I have made a fantastic mess of trimmed material right here. Okay. I'm going to paint this, make it look more like a fly. If you don't have paints, markers, or whatever, you could obviously just leave it white. How many fish have been caught just on seriously just a white fly ton? So if you don't if you don't want to paint or whatever, you know, do not worry about that. Um, this has so much flash though, uh, because it's <laughs> that's all it is is flash right now. I'm gonna paint this and take some of the flash out and just uh, give it a little bit more of, of a kind of a shaded value type of a, a look to it. Um, I'm just going off my the head too. It's olive up on top. There we go. And then it kind of has a olive goldish side and then of course the look at me bright orange red on the bottom. So I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to add a color to it that's kind of a clay look right here on the bottom flank. I, I want the very bottom, you know, to have a strip of pure white to it. And this is such a, a faint color, I doubt you guys are going to be able to see this actually. So I'll just run it, get that on the flank. And from there, I'm going to go with chartreuse, and uh, this is these are the Copic markers. Um, I really apologize that this camera has failed to focus very well or very quickly, but right right above that gray color, I'm going to run a line of chartreuse, not too much. But if, uh, this is a bright colored head for the most part on the bottom. And because I'm fishing murky water in my uh, lake right now, I'm going to flank it or put the flanks of this fly with some chartreuse. So I want that to be pretty bright. I mean, this is a fly that screams to be looked at. It needs attention from a big cutthroat or brown trout. Rainbow, take any of them. Um, from there, we're going to go with some gold. Come on, camera. There we go. Well, close enough. Um, we're going to go right into the chartreuse and right above with some gold. Run it down on this side too. I'll darken the chartreuse just a hair up on top and bring that through. If you see the bot the belly we still have a lot of white. You know what this stuff is so bright I doubt that you're gonna be able to see it very much. So there's that. We've used our gold and now I'm gonna use a little bit bolder color. And this is a this is mustard. I'm gonna put that right up on top of the gold here. Not too much. We're going to go with pale olive. You just have to trust me on this to, to speed this up. But we're going to go pale olive right up on top of the mustard. There we go. The back is starting to come along nicely. I'm going to drop down just a little bit and cover up some of the previous mustard that we did with that pale olive. The colors will all run together, but I, I definitely want a, a lateral line. And we're gonna, I'm just about to make that more of a definite line with a darker olive. So I'm gonna come right off of the top of the head 
right where the shoulder line would be with this darker olive. We're going to go all over over the other colors and we're going to I'm going to come up underneath from the back side and get the underneath of these fibers with this darker olive as well. And then get right behind the head. Work my way on the other side now because I want that uh, lateral line to really show up, really stick out. When this rolls through the water, obviously when it has a dark back and a light belly, it's really going to create more contrast for the fish to pick up on. They're going to see it, hopefully, and they're going to feel it. It has the same, you know, kind of a profile with that, you know, whatever they see with their lateral line as the feed that's in there. So hopefully they pick that up and recognize it, that, yeah, this is a, a possible food item. It's, a, it's about the right size. They see it and they feel it. And with that action of it is so unnatural, you know, obviously healthy fish do not jerk back and forth and pause and jerk back and forth and pause, that we trigger a, a reactive type of a strike. So there's our back. And as we as I roll it over, you can see that break in the, the light and dark. And what I'm going to do now is grab an even darker color, and I'm going to go just make kind of a small line in the very back uh, for a dark, dark spine or a, like a dorsal color, really dark dorsal color. And I'm going to start right back behind the head. I'm going to make my way all the way to the tail doing this. And then I'm going to come up from underneath and get the underneath of the uh, fibers as well. Make a really dark uh, line. Not quite as wide of, of a brush stroke or area as I just did with the olive. This is going to be even narrower and <clears throat> make it look more like a, a fish. Okay, so we got that. That might not show up too well on camera, but that's what we've got there. Some of these uh, fibers are just a little wild. I'm going to cut them. So that's what you've got head on profile view. Come on, camera, pick it up. There we go. So that's what we've got so far. And with my red marker, I'm going to outline the throat under and around the gills. Just like this. I'm going to start at that dark line and move this right around, right underneath the throat. So that area is more red. It looks like it has gill, bleeding gill. There we go. So that's that. And I'm going to add right behind the number two hook, number size number two. I'm just going to put a red dot there a little bit around it just like that break up a little bit of that belly with some red I should do a, a review on this camera and it wouldn't be that good of one <laughs> okay so note to self uh, different camera next time so anyway that is the zip stick in a nutshell um, this has such a minnowy looking profile, little fish profile, out of the water and in the water. Um, the other reason I was going to tell you for this right here is it not only has more uh, directional pull to it, the, the crimped wire, 
but I usually use a the mono loop knot or just the, the loop knot. You know, it doesn't matter if you're using braid or fluorocarbon. It's just your basic loop knot. And when I had that uh, loose in the hook eye, it would it would start to fray because I'm just pounding on this through the water, and it just it wasn't that strong. It started to fray, and I lo uh, lost confidence in it. So when I put this on here, I got a better turn of the fly through the water, you know, as I was ripping it through the water. And then also I could tie a Palomar knot uh, onto this loop where it's tight and there is no friction uh, back and forth movement of loose uh, tippet material in here. So that was the other reason uh, for this crimped wire. And it's worked out great. Um, I do sell... Everything that you see here, minus the markers, in a kit that's available on the Drop Jaw Flies website, or you can buy these tied fully, uh, that's available also. They do take some time. There's quite a bit of material involved, and so they're not the cheapest fly in the world, but they are fun, and I would definitely, definitely always, I will for, for the rest of my fishing time, unless I come up with something new that supersedes this, I will always have one. And I might, this might be my first fly that I use from now on just to see, just to kind of check the mood of the fish. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for staying, hanging in with me while I tied this. I wish you the best of luck on the water. And when you do get one, when one does chase your fly and puts his mouth over it, remember to stick him solid.